Welcome back to another episode. You know, in between episodes, I've been thinking, oh, what to do, what to do. I don't know what is the, you know, what can I do next? And I've thought about it, and I've come to the realisation, my gear still needs to be upgraded. So, I mean, this shovel is pretty much out. My pick here, this one pretty much has no repairs left in it. The cost to repair it now is like 30 odd levels. I'm not doing that again. And then my armor pieces, you know, they're about halfway uh, through the durability and they've got nothing on them. There's no protection, no one breaking, anything like that. I think it's time that we got some decent gear. Now, there's a few ways of doing it. The main one is what we're going to do, and that is villager trading. So I think the one thing that we need to do is figure out where the nearest village is. Now, the good thing is, because I've been exploring in this world, I actually know where the nearest village is. It's to over this side on the map. I mean, you're not even going to be able to see it due to render distance on realms, but it is about 600 blocks in this direction. So there's actually a big mountain over here. But you know what? I'm going to probably have to sleep and get the... Uh, the day where so that we can probably help to visualize it better so it's off in this direction so one of the good things oh there's a wolf nearby that'll be changing soon when they change the wolf spawns in one of the next updates but it's in this direction uh, and one of the things that i've noticed is when i start to see a mountain with cherry blossoms i know i'm pretty much there it's about 500 block journey so let's just start getting on our way over there and this way as well you can see where the map is and you know you can start to get some ideas this again the edge of the map uh here was where the uh i think it was this section no it wasn't ah you can tell i've not been around here that often because i'm not 100 percent. but here is where on the map it went from the thing just attached in to a new island so there's some of the dirt left over from when i did that and we just pocketed up but when we start to go over this way we will start to find our way to the village where we're going to be today so this project is not actually going to be on the island i thought about moving villagers i thought oh we could do that we could get some uh you know like do tracks all the way but well, that's too much effort for this point in the game. In the future, we might move them over. But right now, they're going to stay in place. And I had to stop because I knew that ravine was there somewhere. And there's also a lava pit not too far over. Last thing I wanted to do was uh, fall into that. But over this way is where the mountain is. Right, so there's the mountain. Our island is just over there. The rain doesn't help, but the island is there. So we're about halfway across from each other. And the village is just around the corner. It's nice and hidden away, this village. This is one thing that I like about it. And it is going to be quite a prime location for what I want to do. Just around this corner. There we go. You start to see it coming in. Not the best layer of the village. That's one just on its own. But here we have the village that we are going to do our base of operations for this video. Uh, as you can see, it is quite um, a large one, really. It's quite, it goes quite a way down, quite a few buildings in there. So it's quite a few things, quite a big scope to do a few things with this. But I think the first thing that I'm going to do for this one we might expand it later in the the uh the series as a bit of an extra project as a bit of a second tone when uh that my main one is fully up and running but this tone is just going to be for resources right now and getting better gear so let me just round everyone up <laughs> right so i have them all rounded up i think there's about six villagers uh from this village so i've got them all in here they all seem to have professions but i have taken away the profession blocks i think out of here but with the area it's a uh, 
it's all lit up now, so I shouldn't get mob spawns on the surface. Not lit up underneath. I'm not really too bothered about preventing spawns uh, in this for now. Uh, but, you know, like most of the buildings, I do think that I have removed, like we had a smoker here. Um, I think there was a smoker in this building as well on the second floor. A few other areas. There was a, like a couple of different like firm pens. Quite a few hair bales, which we will make use of in this uh, this one. I've done that for just some extra wood. But quite a bit of scope. Now, what I want to do in this is probably flatten the world out a little bit. Or level the world out, so to speak. So that we can have... Because the part of me was thinking, do we have huts for different professions? Like houses for them? But the way that it is going, I want a lot of book trades. So... The first books like are the main ones, so I want protection, mending, unbreaking, efficiency, looting, fortune, the main ones for the tools, and then after that, why not? Why not just get every single book that there is at the top level, so that if I do want to move something, like if the tridents that I've got, if I want to enchant them, let's just do that. So to get that sorted, what I do need to do is get the world all flattened out and prepped. So one of the things that I think the first is needed is probably just getting rid of the farmlands. The good thing about things like this is I can just take the items as needed, but I am going to remove these buildings. You can see I made a start on a couple just because I needed a little bit of wood over this way, but I'm going to start removing all the buildings harvest what I can but store what I can as well so that we're not really wasting anything and then potentially think about moving them from there because I think this area is a nice area where we can start holding everything together but I will just be doing this it's going to be a bit of a long project this one for me uh, in between my own stuff so I will get on this now There it is. I've managed to remove every single building. This was the tallest part as you came in. I've now removed every building. Apart from that one with the villages in, I think the next thing I want to do is start to lay out some foundations and areas where I want to build. I think I'm going to build it. I've got my cords up. I want to build potentially at level 64. 63 is pretty low down in here, but 64 is just if i go to it 64 is pretty low down still but it is just one over this one so i feel like if i fill this area in you know that's on that level so it won't be too bad and i take these back around the edges same as over there takes it back maybe down there it gives me a really really nice area to play with so i'm actually going to try that i'm going to put that over and see how we go from there and there it is we have made ourselves some room uh it's quite a big footprint in this build that we're going to do it's got quite a bit of space here that we cannot put in probably not going to use all of it i have been doing some um creative building for a couple of days and i think the build isn't going to go as far out as i had it at the time but it's a good plan. It's got, a, like I say, it's a massive footprint. It is going to be the biggest building that I have done so far, uh, even in any kind of survival setting. This is this is far beyond what I normally build. But to do it, we do need to start measuring out. Now, I want to do it. When I was measuring it out, it was, I think it was like here where it started. And I had one of these... Then I had five behind, so one, two, three, four, five, and then another one. So these were like seven apart, like a lot of the buildings that we've done over there uh, and how I build, five behind and then in. So let's pop some in. I think that is all of them. I think it was 11 that I wanted. So let's just make sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, you got in the way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, eleven. 
Brilliant. That's that's right. So 11 is right along that way. And then I want to do 7 across on the other one. So... One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, perfect measurement. Perfect measurement. It all fits in. So let's just get the block, like the this box, all finished. There it is. We've got a nice area cleared. So it's got some nice space around the sides. There's a little bit of uh, space for expansion. There's a little indent around this side where we can put something in in future. There it is. What I've done is I've put a layout of where the builds are going to go. Now, this is the actual like edge of the build. It's going to go one block out further for the roof. So this is why when I've measured it, it's just it's very close to this side, but it's not actually going to touch. So there would be a jump if you did make it so that it would go to like here on this side, on the other side. And this is going to be the biggest building that I have ever done. And that's not even just in um, this world. It's in all my worlds I've ever done. This is the biggest survival building I have ever done. So this is going to be a villager trading hall, and I might be able to get some farms in here as well. I think sometimes one of the, the weird things about how uh, Bedrock Edition works is villagers, you know, get quite a few villagers together with professions. They will naturally spawn some iron golems. So I think we might be able to do something with that as well. But here's that's going to be something for a little bit later on. And here, like I said, is the outline. It follows the pattern of what I do um, most of the time anyway with my normal build, same as the builds over there. Seven wide, so we've got the two edges and then five in between. And then what we're going to do with these, we are going to go five tall altogether. And this is going to form the beginning bases of the build. So this is going to get the uh, outer structure. So what I'm envisioning with it, I've already done a little bit of a creative world building, but it's going to be it's going to be a weird shape. So it's going to have a small roof, and then it's going to go a bit higher, and then it's going to go up and then in. So small, taller, and then these three, uh, the middle ones, is where it's going to be like where it gets really tall uh and that's that's gonna be uh the way that it is i think the entrance is gonna be on you know both sides i might eventually bring this bit of uh land down because you know the base is over that way but i want to get first all these plinths in now i know the ones in the middle i'm not gonna put in but all the rest of them i'm gonna get them put in now we have ourselves the outer shells so again the middle bits i might actually do like a, a walk through my prefit on either side so that they can't come out uh, and that block will be going like on either side because that's where the entrance way is there's a nice little like archway entrance way that i've got for this but yeah five tall and then each one of them having acacia wood on the end just so that it stops it up even on the tops of them they have an acacia wood uh it's a nice it's a nice like kind of go between between wood and stone but the next thing i want to do on this is get the roof on or the first part of the roof so on this so the first part of the roof it will slowly go up towards there and it normally will stop about there if i've done it right but for this, I'm going to need a whole ton of spruce. This is very much a spruce heavy build uh, in all of this one. I think each one, you know, you're going close to a stack of spruce along there, if not more. I mean, these are 11 with one on each bit. It's, it's going to be more than a stack of spruce per one. So let me get a lot of spruce together. Start putting in the first side so you can get an idea of how this is going to look. I have the roof design in now, so it starts with just, just normal slabs, and it's stirs, and then it's slabs, like full block, slab, full block, uh, but offset, so it gives it a nice little peak to it, so it goes, you know, like, sharp in, up, and then right to the top, 
across them ones. These were so, so these ones are what the size were originally. They weren't tall enough, so I've just increased the height of them so that they go just behind. Now, the one big thing that I'm going to have to do with all this is fill in all of these. So that is going to take some time because we have to go all the way down and, you know, with each slab and then each slab, each slab, each layer and layer and layer. It is going to take a lot to get this filled in. So, you know, it is going to be a lot of me just sat here doing this. And that is not going to be very entertaining. It's not going to be entertaining for you to see. So, like a lot of the other bits, I am just going to do that off camera and then come back when that is all done. But the step after that is actually filling in this side of it, where all the insides are. Now, I think with this, I'm going to go for stone and then let's get a block palette together. Back to the island so I can get a block palette together. So, you know, there's the acacia that's, you know, the supports that are going up. And then I think we're going to have just a palette that is this. It's, it's very nice to the eye. You know, the taller it gets, the, the uh, top, the lighter it'll go. Deck with some cracked stone bricks and normal stone bricks. Normal stone, then andesite on top. I think everything there is very safe. It's very complimentary. Uh, I think it's just going to go into the wheel hoist because, you know, this is a big building overall. You don't want too much detail, too much variation because then it goes all over the place and then you too much, like, too much detail in will overpower it. I think this amount will be really nice. So let me start getting all of the shell together of this building and I'll come back once it's all sorted. Oh, it has been a long time between clips. Uh, I've had so many things happen. But we're here. We've done. We have finished it. So, yeah, I, I have had so much on my plate. And then holidays in between. That is why it's been so long between the video. I thought it was going to be a quick project. And then it didn't be. Because I forgot how annoying villagers can be. But let's just take a look at the building. So this is what I have. This is just where I've been breeding them up and then moving them in. Um, but this is the building that I've gone for. I mean, it doesn't look... It looks quite wide, but then when you actually come down, I mean, you can see how wide the area is, and it takes up a lot of the area. Oh, drop down. You can see it goes quite far down. And then let's just have a look inside. So, I mean, inside, you can just see just at the beginning, it already starts off. Like, you can see there's all my librarians one side, there's all my farmers one side, and then there's a couple of extra bits. Uh, a lot of iron golems. Now, this is another reason why it's taken so long to actually get an upload out, because I've been trying to make this into a passive iron farm as well. And for some reason, no matter what I do, I break it and then I have to go to a, a backup of the world. I've done all sorts. I've took this roof out and I've put like a little area here just with a spawning platform and they just don't. They only seem to like spawning in this bit. Now, I don't know whether it's an issue with bedrock, and, and how they spawn on there, or what, or it's just the fact that it's on ground level. But at least, I mean, I've got golems, and if I wanted to, I can just start killing them. You know, hit one, run over here, they can't get past that bit. But here is my entire villager set up. So yeah, all these ones, I've got all of these built up to master level. All of them have golden carrot trades. So food won't be an issue. I have on this, excuse me, sir. Um, on this side, I have all um, uh, clerics so that I have bottles of enchanting. That will be something that I set up in the future so that all the bottles go into one place and I've got um, just XP needed for repairs and things like that. This side, I have pretty much all the um, book trades. So that's a bookshelf trade. He's not been converted yet, so I don't get one for one, but it will be something that I will do. It's going to be something that I need to worry about with all these around, trying to get him converted. Might do it from the outside or something. But then I have every single book trade that I need. They're not all at the best prices as well. Um, and then I've tried to put them in different ways. So, you know, most things, they'll get unbreaking and efficiency. Then I did go for kind of armor trades. 
and then you know like little things for the armor efficiency and then these are my tool trades so fortune sharpness smite bane of earth pods put it in red because it's going to be something that i don't use that often right spectre wants it not back you know then we've got our bows or our crossbows if we wanted them tridents as well and then a couple of other bits as well for tridents and then i forgot that frost walker was a thing so he went here now i've got some extra ones i've got some um things so that i don't need to worry about any um tools so i've got all my tool trades i've got all my uh between these two i've got my pants chest plate so i've got armor trades in case i die and i need to restock everything and i have some gaps here i've just have some empty uh slots here don't know what i'm going to put into them ones yet i might think about putting some of the um fletchers in there maybe get some stick trades going and then this section is all the masons i mean not only do you get your bricks but i've gone for the color terracotta now each one of these are laid out exactly the same so for whatever color terracotta it is i have the glazed terracotta tread on the opposite side so you know we've got our purple terracotta which means we've got purple glazed terracotta they're not in any color order they were just in the order that i was getting them in and this is another reason why all of this has taken so long to get these guys to the trade it is you know it is the uh expert trade so i mean i've not even got the master trades on these ones i've just locked in the trades that they needed and then seen what each one it is and then move them along um so that is quite a long time you know especially when a lot of them they were giving me the same trade over and over it was quite a long time to get them together and then again with these guys to get not only the right trade that i want but you know for example like for loyalty to get loyalty three um it took quite a while as well so that's why all of this has taken quite a long time to get it all sorted but then i've got a source of iron i mean all these are just naturally spawning golems so when you kill one another one will take its place uh, in the future as well i mean i've built myself a little upstairs area in here so you can see everything around you know, i've done a lot of the lanterns which is trades from the librarians um and a little floor design i will eventually put a lot of storage up here i might try and put some firms in along the top or something like that that i might need uh for some of the trades you know if possible i mean a book tree if i could get a sugar cane firm or something along the top here um and then maybe like a leather firm or something like that that might be a worth oh you know there's always space here that i can expand out and put things in but i just wanted to make it uh, initially i had these cells all the way to like up here but then i realized i don't need that that is far far too many but at least i do have a form of iron i've now got a form of emeralds i've got all the trades that i need i've got xp over there it is just going to be a long case of gathering some gold together and eventually getting them all uh converted for the best prices but that is the ending of this video sorry it has taken so long so in my own life i've had i've changed jobs i've you know so i need to get used to the kind of schedule that i have in my, my new work life i have you know i've had a holiday i've had like my own house stuff that i've needed to get sorted you know this is a hobby for me as well but hopefully the next one isn't going to be too much longer out after this because all I'm going to be doing is just doing a little decorating project. Maybe we might spruce up this area. We might look at the town square. I am going to build... Hello. I am going to build a tunnel as well. If I uh, move away from there. So I'm thinking a tunnel around here. Underground because the island... I don't know if I'll be able to see it here. I mean, they have increased the render distance on realms since I've been playing, like, since I've been doing this video. But the uh, the island where my town is, is just over there. It's not that far away. It's about 200 blocks. So I am going to build a tunnel or something under there. We'll probably get the honor rail achievement as well while we're doing it, um, if I don't already have it. But that'll do it for this video. I will do think about some decorations, maybe a firm that we can build in the next one, but I will see you next time. Thank you.